Welcome back. It's exercise time. Exercise number three has got question one, question two, question three, and question four. Where can you get this? So if you go and type into your browser bit.ly forward slash dart underscore ex3, this should take me take you to my guest that I've created with the exercise, and this should display in front of you. And you can just make it a bit bigger to to see clearly. Okay, so it's the same dart pad. Okay, so if I look at this one, question number one, it says use the declared variables, and this is age and ID, to decide whether or not a person is eligible to rent movies. A person is eligible when the age is more than 20, in this case the age is 15, and the person can show his or her ID. So we can use this variable ID, you can see it's a boolean, so it's either true or false, and if ID is true, he's got his ID with him, if it's false, uh, he's not got his ID with him. And then an example printout should be, so you should print out to the console, eligible to rent movies with a question mark, and then you must have a true or a false. In this specific case, it will print out a false. So you'll need to do some Boolean expression inside of a print statement to work out if the age is bigger than 20 and this person also has got an ID document with them. Uh, so just have a look at this part there, which will help you to do your Boolean expression to work out if this person is eligible to rent a movie. Question number two, use the variables below and work out the price the customer will pay to enter the wildlife park. For a bike, you pay $10. For a car, you pay $20. For a bus, you pay $30. And the example printout would be, and this is the declaration, uh, your type, it will give you the type bike and you can test it, change it to car or change it to bus or whatever. And then it will print out, you will pay $10 to enter the wildlife park. So that $10 could be 10, 20 or 30, depending on whether this variable has got bike, car or bus. So for this, you'll need to use the ternary operator that we did. Now let's look at question number three. Use the email declared below, it's this email, peter at gmail.com, and test if it is a valid email address. For an email address to be valid, it must contain an at symbol and a dot. Example printout. So you're going to print out to the console, valid email address, true or false. So you're going to take this, check whether it's valid, and then print out true or false. I'm going to leave you at that one, see if you can do that one. Question number four, look at the following declarations of variables. So we've got string first name is Peter, string last name is Johnson, string full name is basically taking the first name Peter and then displaying Johnson. So it will say John uh, Peter Johnson. Then string full name length is the full name dot length, which give you the number of characters in the full name and then convert that to the string so we can save it in that string variable. And then the full name, we're changing that full name variable here to Peter Pollock again. Okay, so look at the following declarations. You need to change all the string declarations to either const, final, or var. So I want you to, uh, to replace this string, 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 and string. I'm not able to click there, I don't know why. So that string, 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 and string must be either const, final, or var, and see if you can change them. So try this first on a piece of paper, and then check it in coding. So you can pause the video now, try this on your own, and then come back to the video when you're done. Right, let's carry on. Let's do question number one. So question number one, use the declared variables. Let me just open up this a bit bigger. Use the declared variables uh, to check if a person is eligible. A person is eligible when the age is more than 20, and you can show his ID. So that's the example printout. So I know I will need to start my printout with eligible to rent movies. So you can see that's the first part there, eligible to mo rent movies with the question mark. And then I will need a true or a false there. So I'm going to use the dollar sign with the brackets because we're going to use or do some calculations in it. In this case, not calculations, but just working out a Boolean expression to see what it, what's the value of it. So what is the Boolean expression? We need to test for the age more than 20. So I'm going to say age more than 20. And the person 
must show his ID. So I'm going to use the AND operator there because he must be more than 80 and his ID must be true. So you can say ID equals true like that. And you can see it's got no problem. But because the ID is already a true or a false value, you don't need to actually put the equals to true there because that will automatically test whether that ID is true or not. So you can just say age bigger than 20 and ID. Or if it's confusing to you, you can say ID equals true. Right, did you get this part? So let's run it quickly. So if the age is greater than 20 and the ID is true, it will print out true. But in this case, because of the age, it will not print out true. But if I make the, make the age 30 there and run this again, it will now print out true there. Okay, let's go to question number two. Use the variables below or the variable below and work out the price the customer will pay to enter the wildlife park. For a car, for a bike, it's ten dollars. For a car, it's twenty. For a bus, it's thirty. So let's say we're going to print out this. You will pay ten dollars to enter the wildlife park. Okay. So our print statement will start with "You will pay." And now that ten dollars, we need to do something here. So obviously, we'll need to have our dollar sign to include something in there. In this case, it's again a Boolean expression, but it's the ternary operator. So we're going to use the ternary operator in here to decide whether it's going to pay $10, $20, or $30. So let's test the type. So I'm going to say if the type is equal to, let's start with the first one, which is the bike. If it's a bike, question mark, then the value that we want to have displayed is $10. But now we remember that the dollar sign actually is where we want to include something into, into the text. So we need to use the escape character there to actually show us that dollar sign. So then it's going to be $10. If it's not a bike, then I want to go and test again. So I'm going to test if the type is now a car question mark then I want to have it as again the escape with the dollar and the 20 and then if it's not a bike and it's not a car then it must be the last one which is a bus which means that we will need to have a $30 there okay so you can see the ternary operator there let's just quickly go through it you see there's the type, that's the expression we're testing. There's the question mark. This will happen when it's true. This will happen when it's false. So the false part is again uh, another ternary operator, which if it's true that it's a car, it will show $20. If it's false, it's not a car, it will show $30. So let's see how this one runs. You will ooh, pay. You will pay. Just run this quickly, see if the dollar amount is correct. You will pay $10 because it's a bike. Let's make this a car and run it again. Ah, for a car, we'll pay $20. But what if it's a bus? Then we'll pay $30. Okay. Now, the only thing we need to add is to enter the wildlife park. So I'm just going to copy that and add it at the end there. And that should be fine. And there you go. So I hope you had something similar. This is uh, maybe a, a bit more difficult or complicated than the first one. So run through this one again and make sure you get the correct output. Let's look at question number three. Use the email declared below and test if it's a valid email address. For example, or for an email address to be valid, it must contain the at and the dot. And the example printout, valid email address, true or false. Okay, so our print statement will be valid email address with a question mark. And then we must print out true or false. So some Boolean expression we'll need there. So what we're going to do is to say, well, if the email contains, you remember the contains method we did, if it contains the at, where is the at symbol now? If it contains an at, and at the same time, that email must also contain 
the dot. So it's valid if the email, that one, beta at gmail.com, contains the at and also contains the dot, then it's valid. So if I run this, it should tell me that's a valid email address. Valid email address, true. But if I remove, for example, the at sign there, and I run it again, that will not be a valid email address, and it's going to show, show you false there. If I have the at, but I do not have the dot, it will also tell me that that email address is false. It's not a correct email address. So this is the correct one, valid email address. That one's valid, so it will say true. Hope you got that one correct. Let's look at question number four. Look at the following declarations of variables. You need to change all the string declarations to const, final, or var. So remember what I said? Okay, you had to try this first on a piece of paper. So I'm going to physically do it now here so you can see the changes and why it's, why it's accepted and not. So in this case, you remember that we said start with const first and see if it doesn't work, then final, and then var. So I'm going to use, for Peter and Johnson, I think it's quite clear that we can directly use these two as a const. Why is that? Because at compile time already, I am assigning Peter, which is a constant, to the first name. So that that is definitely a constant. So I'm going to use the second one there, the string also, as a const. What happened now? Let's go there. Use that one also as a const. Why? Because on compile time, it already knows this value will be Johnson. That one will be Peter. So it's allowed. And you can see we've got no errors at all. Now let's look at the third line there. It says the full name equals the first name and appending the last name. So actually this would work as a constant because the Dart compiler is smart enough to see that Peter and Johnson has already been given to us and I can actually add that first name and last name directly in this. So I could change this now to a constant and it should work. But there's one problem here. You can see that full name there gets declared and then changed here. And that's one thing about a constant, the const and the final keywords for them, you cannot change the values later again. So if you want to change the value, then it cannot be const or final, but this one needs to be a var. So you'll see, even if I make it final, final means it's the final version of it. You cannot change it later on. And the same for constant. It's a final version. You cannot change it later on. Okay, so this one should be variable, var. Then for this one, string full name length, equals full name dot length dot to string. Now, because we work out the length later on of the full name that needs to be um, calculated first, then take the length, the compiler is not smart enough to actually work that out uh, during compile time. So if I use this one as a constant, you'll see it's going to give me an error there. Constant variables must be initialized with a constant value. So it cannot find this value during compile time, and that's why it will give you an error there. So the next best one is to use it as final. Will final work? Yes, it will work. So even if we get this or running a method that's getting some data online, which can take some time, I can still declare it as final, which just means now in this case, I cannot change the full name length later on in my coding. It is final. It's a read only. It's only that one. And then here we change the full name to, to Peter Pollock. And you can see we've got no errors at all. So we've got the constants, we've got the final, and we've got var there filled out. Thank you very much for doing the exercise. See you in the next video.